space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hi. Hey, what William. A, what a magnificent home you have there. Final uh, is it, Miami. Is it, is it Prey or Pradeen? It's a Praveen, but Prav is fine. P-R-A-V, Prav. Oh, P-R-A-V. Yeah, Prav, that's my nickname. Praveen. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely name. What, uh, what part of India are your, uh, is your background? I'm uh, Telugu, so I'm from Andhra Pradesh, South India. Ah. Yeah, have you been? Um, no. Uh, I've been to New Delhi, uh, which is center, right? But in the center. Uh, north, but yeah, I used to live there. Yeah, I used to work Did there. you? Yeah. Uh, e extraordinary city, uh, but it's really hot and humid where, where you lived. Did, did you come here first generation or were your parents? Yeah, I came when I was a toddler. So. And, and where are you calling from now? Uh, we're in South Florida, uh, near Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Miami. So the, the, the hot humidity is familiar yeah. to you. Yeah, it's good for your skin. Well, that's a wonderful home you got there, uh, filled with all kinds of artworks, huh? Yeah, actually, we we did the. Uh, I'm a, I'm the host for the one of the hosts for the Miami Science Fiction Film Festival. How so are you? We turn this into like a, a bridge of the Enterprise, and when we do oh, event, for goodness sake! When we instead of just a green screen, we actually have cardboard cutouts of Spock. We oh, even did a, uh, we did a uh, a really cool like uh, AR VR. Spock dance party with you and Spock dancing on the uh, Enterprise. We actually did that in LA. I'm, I'm glad you had us dancing because other people have us doing other things. Uh, what is the staircase? Where does the staircase lead to? Uh, that's that's a uh, bedroom up there. How many bedrooms you got there? Uh, it's six six bedrooms. It's a big house. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long journey to get here. But uh, when I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, we did an event for this film, film festival just a couple of days ago about your new blockchain uh, interest. Yes. And uh, so I was interested in asking you about uh, how you got involved in Wax Blockchain. So, uh, say that, you're interested in asking me what? About how you got involved in Wax Blockchain. Right. Basically, well, you know, one, of thing, one of the things is particularly everyone is asking you about, you used to talk about your, you know, your, your live stream or the stars, you know, you become dust after you pass type thing. Is this a way for you to, you to save your life or save your, your consciousness afterwards, like in the whole Star Trek realm? You think blockchain will do that? I'm asking you. I don't know. It's, uh, well, we'll, we'll it's, it, yeah. it's as reasonable an explanation as any. <laughs> yeah. we, we all become block. Well, you know, if you take uh, the, the, uh, both the continuity and the ephemeralness of blockchain. I mean, it exists and it doesn't exist. Uh, uh, it, it could resemble what happens to our life force uh, afterwards. Uh, are, are you, um, are you, uh, what religion were you born into and what do you practice now? So I practice Hinduism, Hinduism and, and uh, and as well as uh, I do a lot of transcendental meditation. So I'm actually the uh, one of the uh, admins for the transcendental meditation Facebook group. And I used to live in an ashram for them as well. Yeah. Did you really? That's, you'd be yeah. fascinating to talk to. Um, uh, so, so there is a question uh, that we all should ask about reality. What is in essence the reality? Uh, and each person has their own reality, and then there's something else, I guess, uh, which which Hinduism and Buddhism uh, uh, apply themselves more to than any other. I'm fascinated by that, and I'm fascinated by uh, transcendental meditation. Uh, you know, in an I incidental way, I try to uh, meditate, but not like you are, not with uh, that uh, enormity. I would think that's a, a great way to to think about life. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. You know, one of the things that uh, people who do meditation or yoga, you know, sometimes they get led into blockchain because of uh, some of the concepts. 
So, you know, for example, Dennis Kucinich, I was talking to him actually at his wife's uh, uh, film premiere in Pasadena. And he's, he was talking about how, you know, money is, is a measure of quantum energy, right? So basically, you know, you want to open up your, 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 your chakras, so to speak. He didn't use the word chakras, but, you know, I'm putting words in the mouth, but open up your, your energy centers to the flow of energy flow of the universe. And that's what money is. So, you know, it seems like in a way, like blockchain might be able to track that quanta. Well, you mean the, the e-currency is like the way, uh, the, a, a dollar bill isn't that way, is it? Yeah, a dollar bill, I mean, in theory, maybe early on when perhaps money was invented where your, your, your beads m meant how important you, you did things for uh, your tribe. Yeah. But now, I don't know. But really, it's I like... In, uh, I was in... Uh, in uh, Tibet, and, oh, wow. cool. and they measure their wealth by uh, the wood that they have to burn. Uh, the, the fire in their one-room homes, uh, the fire is everything. They cook and are heated by and illuminated by fire. And, and everything uh, in the mountains is desolate. They've long, many centuries ago, cut down the... Uh, the uh, the the wood so finding a stick that they can burn is is wealth because what's happening as i'm sure you know that the ganges starts in the himalayas and and now that uh they don't have the the forests that bound the earth to the mountains that's sweeping down the ganges and all the other rivers and and uh flooding the deltas with silt and uh, silting everything up. So, I mean, there's a great deal of going on. Uh, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really, and then I think your experience with your history of uh, being a Renaissance man, I think you'd be the perfect person to comment to that, but have you been to Dharamshala where the Dalai Lama actually lives or in India or? No, I haven't, but I was at Ramboshe. Uh, uh, you know the name? Uh, the uh, I haven't been to Ramboche. Yeah. yeah, the temple near Mount Everest. Oh, uh, wow. I was there for a week uh, and uh, trying to, you know, here's, I'm, we don't have much time, but I'll tell you this story briefly. I, so it's at the confluence of many of the mountains that are considered holy and a place for spiritual awakening, which is why this thousand year old temple was built there. And so I slept outside in my, in my uh, uh, sleeping bag, wanting to have enlightenment. I thought this was where enlightenment takes place. And, and I'm waiting for the, the spirits to come and they never came. And, and now I'm packing up to go come back to the States. And I suddenly realized that enlightenment doesn't have to be at the confluence of all those, all those mountains. Enlightenment can come like right now. You don't need anything else but a grain of sand to ponder and to receive enlightenment. And that was enlightenment. So I had enlightenment. Yeah, I believe it. You can see it, see it in you, the way you, um, everything about you. But I think even Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, after his TM experience, he said something similar, you know, even he, he experiences some sort of enlightenment after TM and going back to the gym. Uh, he didn't have to go to the cave, but uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty, pretty good. Heavy. A pleasure to have talked to you. You as well. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.